I've been making automotive videos and how-to videos for years. Years and years and years. Right now, I'm cleaning up the steel gasket on a Dana 60 full floating rear end. 410 uh, gears. Non-limited slip carrier. And basically we had to pull the axles out because we pulled the carrier out and the carrier bearings to check the bearings because we had a vibration in the rear end. And you know I have quite a bit of followers on YouTube and other platforms. I just don't have, I don't collect royalties for my videos because I don't believe in putting those nasty commercials in my videos and I don't believe in making money off of free information or information that should be free. I think we should all educate each other. I've always believed that. That might be stupid to some people who are opportunistic in the financial field. But I make my finances, I make my ends meet different ways. Not from making videos or trying to educate the public. However, I do receive a lot of criticism for making free videos on how to do. Like this Dana 60, for instance. Some people might want to know why your rear end or your vehicle vibrates and you can't, and you've been through the transmission you've even rebuilt it and you and I did a how-to on that uh, I got another how-to to come out on a different transmission that's bigger um, which is a 4R100 uh, and that covers the E4OD and all of its variants and you could even take it into the C6 uh, where it came from so I have another one on the 75 uh, or 4R70 you can call it 4R70, 4R75, 4R75E, 4R75W, the beefed up version of the 4R70, which is just a variant of the, of, the, uh, of the AOD, the Ford AOD transmission. But anyway, I do this stuff for free because I want to, because I enjoy making videos, I enjoy helping people, and I enjoy helping people figure out, hey, what's going on, how do I do things? Pause that for a minute. So I got somewhere in the, I don't know, on one platform alone, I got somewhere around, I don't know, is it a couple hundred thousand views? Yeah, somewhere around there. I mean, it's too much to count. A couple Cross. hundred thousand views per video. I've got numerous videos spanning back years, different platforms. And as you can see, the carrier is out of this Dana 60. Uh, by the way, I did, I did find the build number, or the BOM, it was right here on a sticker plate that was on the back of the cover on the two bolts. There's a BOM number right here, this is the build, and you can look that up on a website and it shows you the gear ratio and everything else used in, in this particular rear end that was built. Uh, I think I still have the shims in, you don't want to fool with those too much, and we have the caps off. As you can see, I'm cleaning up this Dana 60. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. I gotta do many things at one time in this video. Um, I'm cleaning up the rear end cover. You always wanna make sure you have your caps set apart. You wanna put your caps in the exact same way they came off. I have arrows. Mine goes arrows out. And they're marked right for the right side of the vehicle. And D for driver's side so I don't mix up D and R because I could be dyslexic you never know anyway okay this is your cover that's about clean enough you would use a RTV black on this because it would resist the most oil and you don't need a gasket okay because it didn't come with a gasket on it and so on and so forth okay we've almost never used a gasket on our rear end housing covers pause that for a minute all right another important note before I go because I'm getting wrapped up in politics and schemes in the world and all, but it's very important because this stuff is actually probably hurting us really bad. Um, I wanted to point out that on the gear here, <coughs> on the input shaft for this rear end, okay, you would call that a what? That would be a pinion right there, but uh. That's a pinion. Yeah. It's a pinion gear. Pinion and ring gear, yeah. 
opinion. Green gear is a big one. That's opinion. Right. Okay. So this is called opinion. I'm also teaching children as well, or I'm sorry, young men as well. So this is opinion. On Ford's particular particular setup, <clears throat> between 373 and 411, for their full floating, semi floating, etc. axles and rear ends for the Dana, at least for the Dana, I know, Dana 60s, they are using. The only thing that they are downsizing is not the ring gear. It's not the ring gear. So the ring gear is staying the same. They are downsizing this. They're switching it to... Uh, 373s. 373 gears have what? 11 teeth on the ring gear? I think it's 10. And 4 10s might have 9. Well, let's count then. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, We have 10. Okay, so we have 10. So if we had 11, what would that do? we had 11. That would be bigger, right? That would be bigger, yeah. So the drive bigger. shaft would have to turn less or more revolutions? Drive shaft would have to turn more revolutions. So that would make If it we higher. had 11 teeth, the drive shaft would turn more revolutions? It would have to turn more. Because why? Because we had 11 teeth? Yeah. But that means this whole thing would be not necessarily bigger. No, it won't be bigger, but it will have more teeth. And the more teeth you have, the more you have to spin that to spin up the ring gear. So that would mean the 373 is having nine tooth instead. Pinion. Are you sure? Or are you yeah. sure that's not backwards? I'm pretty sure because if you have nine teeth, then you have to spin the drive shaft less to obtain a full revolution between the nine teeth versus a ten tooth. Ten teeth have to be has to be spun more to make contact. To spin the whole thing around. Got you. Okay. The less that, if you got less okay. teeth, then not the I'll tell you what, I know the answer to that, and I'll let you and other folks figure that out. Okay? So we'll leave it at that. But anyway, that's the only difference. The rest, the ring gear itself has 41 teeth. Okay? They use a standard ring gear with 41 teeth between 411 and 373, or 410 and 373. So 410, 411 gear ratio, they're, they're, they're one up close to the same. But, believe it or not, you do need to get a 410 gear ratio for the Dana 60 for Ford's application, okay? And this particular application, we're talking about a 99 or so. All right, let's, uh, let's go out here. All right. By the way, I just think it's important to note that 373 rear end comes with 11 tooth and 411 comes with 10 tooth. And the ring gear, right here, of 41 T that comes off the carrier, is at 41. You can obviously see we're going to soak this in a bucket full of gasoline, clean it up. I almost want to replace this, but I don't feel like I don't feel like lining this up with crushed sleeves and and setting up the uh, spacers and such to set this rear end up so it doesn't wind hum or. The long, I don't lose the longevity because it seems to be quiet right now and it doesn't seem to be giving me any trouble with noise. The only the only problems I had was vibration. The thing that makes me want to change this is there is a chip on this gear. And it is just rather a sharp nuisance. Where is it at? The chip on the outside. Yeah, it's on the outside and it's it's minute. But you could see how, if you let it go, that it could cause. Look, it's right there. I mean, that's hardly something to complain about. I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, will grind off a section of this tooth real deep, just so they can knock the, the pin out to get the spider gears out of this. By the way, keep your races in their same location. They're already for, worn. for the correct baron, they're worn into their own spaces. We will clean this up in gasoline and check these these uh, particular bearings. We'll make sure that they're not pitted. And these are called carrier bearings. These have to be beat off. Excuse me, guys. These have to be beat off here from behind or pulled off with a cloth. And uh, the other ones need to be pressed on. Okay. So, they're not that easy to get off without damage. Uh, you would use Loctite to put all this back together, especially 
these bolts through the through the gear itself through the ring gear and uh, here are the spider gears okay and these connect to the axle here each axle on the full floating right left etc they're not Pacific right and left marked and these are 32 30 tooth blonde 32 tooth yeah 32 tooth axle is what's commonly used on this particular Dana, Dana, Dana 60 I'm working on. They have other ones. Oh yeah, they have 35. 30. And they have 30. So you gotta get that, that code. So you got 32, 35, and 30. Or just count your spawns. Or that. <laughs> That's what we did. And then you can order a set of whatever you need. Most people go into it and they this gets expensive, you know. We're talking... You 200 know, you, bucks just well, for a ring gear and a pinion. Right, but if you get into the expensive equipment and you, you get into Richmond, it's fairly expensive, but not too bad. But if you get into higher gears, like if you get into more expensive equipment, Barons, etc., then you then you're talking seven hundred dollars to rebuild this rear end, and that's for these components right here. If you buy this carrier and you want to switch to a limited slip differential, thousand, you could do that. You could do an air locker, make it a posi track. But we're not interested in that in this one ton. However, here are the spider gears. They ride up here through a pin. These, they all have thrust washers, so always have your thrust washer. But when you order a set, you get the thrust washers and the gears together. So we were having a vibration at about 50 miles an hour. Then we were having a vibration at 70 miles an hour and above. About 72 and above. That was a bad one too. And then it started getting really bad when you pass somebody at about 75. So bad that we actually lost the drive shaft, blew up a gas tank, and everything else in the process. Part of that is due to the drive shaft shop that welded this particular drive shaft because I had to make me one that was supposed to be heavy duty, and their weld failed, in my opinion. That's what I see happen. Uh, of course, I can't go down the interstate and get the rest of the pieces of this drive shaft to, to confirm that. But based on the way that it broke, I'd have to say that their weld failed. And the fact that vibration's been there through every other drop shaft we had. Right, and it was out of balance as well. So not only that, the, 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 the cheap Chinese steel that they used, or wherever it was ordered from, was probably bent. It was, it was maybe welded crooked, and it wasn't balanced correct. So we won't be doing business with that drop shaft shop anymore. Um, but anyway, we bought a good aftermarket uh, drive shaft and uh, we're good so this is the top gear these gears they're all spider gears spider gear sets what we call it all right look at the chips on the teeth right here right you can see the chips how bad they are and it's full of dog hairs but that's gonna get off in gasoline and uh, they're all chipped right here so they were riding together creating a serious vibration in here which was causing the rear end and the axles to shimmy and there's because a lot of play between the pin too that held them all together right so when you order this kit you get these four gears not the ring gear these four gears and you get the, the, the pin excuse me meathead you get the pin and you get the shims right here and you even get a roll pin all right here's a roll pin it goes in there. This is a roll pin like on a typical firearm, right? Okay. And uh, it's a hardened steel roll pin, spring steel, and it goes in. So it's pretty simple. We'll put this together when we get our gears in tomorrow, and we'll can complete this video. But Okay, we're back here with our Dana 60 rear end. Let me get this cheap Chinese light. I'm looking for metallic fleck, and I don't see any. We've wiped this housing out pretty good. We've also got underneath there and shook the pinion bearing. We have no play at all in the pinion and the pinion bearing. Our wear looks pretty even and good across the pinion. Uh, it's pretty good to note that we had a good preload on here. Preload means how tight the shims are when you slide the carrier and the ring gear together in, when you slide the assembly in. If it's tight and you have to wedge it in, 
then that's a pretty good indication it's got a good preload because the bearings are conical shape and the races have to seat on the conical bearings you wouldn't want a loose preload because then <clears throat> you'd have loose rear bearings and you would have uneven wear here on the gear and on the other gear and you'd have other problems shimmy and shakes and things like that so <coughs> essentially what we found what we were having with the worn out spider gears was that we had a shimmy that was hard to pinpoint in the vehicle in this one ton axle uh, rear end sorry we, we, we had a shimmy that started from central location at cruising speeds and acceleration and then higher speeds and the shimmy would start in the center of, of the rear end here in the spider gears and then radiate out to the axles so it was very hard to pinpoint and then to the wheels so you would think tires were out of alignment uh, out of balance sorry you would think that uh, you would think that an axle was bent you would think that uh, your drive shaft was bent and every little thing that you may do like change the u-joints or something like that would actually make a small difference that would uh, that would only dampen this vibration in other words we found out the real problem when we took the wheels off put lugs back on the rotors and put this thing in drive on jack stands and it vibrated like crazy from the rear end here in drive just at letting go of the gas pedal in drive so we knew right then and there that it was something within the rear end and so we took this rear end apart of course luckily today we did get our spider gears in by Yukon Yukon is not the best brand in the world but it's a budget brand uh, and it's somewhat comparable to what we had in here. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's better than Dana Spicer, but we got it in. And, uh, and we're ready to change those bushing, those, ba those spider gears. So we're going to do that and the pin. Um, what else did I want to point out? We got 250 foot pounds that goes on the pinion nut, but we did not remove the pinion. It's like an inch and three-eighths socket. Yeah, it's a pretty big socket. It's an inch and three-eighths, roughly. 250 foot-pounds, and there's a crush sleeve back there, so I don't want to fool with that because this rear end has worn in to where it's supposed to wear in, and I'm not doing a full overhaul, so I don't want to, I don't want to fool with that. Um, you got 90 foot-pounds on these bolts here that, that hold the carrier in, so your carrier the cap. caps go in at 90 foot pounds four times here and then your ring gear bolt on which I'll show you in a minute is 120 foot pounds each and there's like a ton of them so you want to use Loctite on those because red Loctite specifically yeah for high heat and, and, and high uh, you know high poid oil and stuff like that you use 8090 in a rear end like this uh, unless it's a heavier vehicle or a different gear ratio um, so what we're going to do is uh, finish this job and uh, I wish I could get you know a politician to come up underneath here with me and see what I do and educate the world on an everyday basis because then the world would probably be a better place and they would less likely want to pay someone else to do something like this or just send it to the to the dealer and just get another vehicle or a limo. And the last two times we had it sent to somebody else, it messed up. Yeah, but the point is is that our elected officials don't know how to get down with laymen. They don't. And it's going to take laymen to bring this country back to what it needs to be. Okay, all that hair we've got to clean out before we put this on. Put hey, that where's on. our inspection plate? tag. I'll go get it. Okay, we'll just hang on a minute. We'll show people what an inspection tag looks like. That it was bolted here. A lot of people think the BOM numbers on these particular vehicles are right here. Maybe for a truck. Yeah, that might be for your F-150s, 250s, and 350s. This rear end would be equivalent to an F-350. This was Dana Edition's, Dana's edition of a van rear end, like specifically for a Conalon. Right. Thanks for pointing that out to the general public, to the GP. Um, all right.
let's get let's get our new parts. Okay, so here's the BOM plate. It was bolted on the housing cover like this, sideways between two bolts. Okay, this is on the Dana 60. Um, see, 410 gear ratio. The BOM number, the build number, is right here. It's the bottom number, dash five. You can go on a website, like I said, and you can find out, hey, what was put into this rear end, and it's right there. Okay. Um, you know, it just tells basics. You know, gear ratio. And so on and so forth. Axle splines. Axle splines, etc. You don't feel like counting them yourself. But I don't think you need this BOM number to, to do this job correctly. Um, the only thing you need to do is check all your parts. And like I said, what you don't want to do is mix up these caps right here. You don't you don't want to do that. I mean these uh, races. Now you can replace these races, and that will change a little bit because these races are supposed to be machined uh, perfectly to spec, mill spec but I wouldn't count on that since everything is now made in China okay and if these are the, these are the, the original Dana bearings and races I would tend to want to stick with these races if they don't have any pits and they have a good preload Preload is what I told you before. I explained to you the carrier sits in there tight. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and dump this in here. And we're going to try to keep our races on. And we'll take our ring gear because these are the only parts we're saving. So our ring gear, there's no particular way that ring gear goes on. You just line up your bolt holes, okay? And like like I said, 120. Yeah, you can tell it's Dana original. What? Yeah. yeah. Here you go. His part number if you want it, okay? Some people might want that. What does a Dana part number look like? That 41 stands for 41 tooth count. It says 10 next to it, too. I wonder what that means. Right. So if you use a paste on this, which is a paint, okay? You could use a paint. You could use... You could use something like rectal seal, rectoseal, which is a pipe dope. You could paint on these these teeth, and then torque everything down, and then run your pinion to a, in a circle pattern, and then back run one way, and then run it the other way, and check the wear on the back and the front side of the gears. Make sure they're rotting in the center like they're supposed to. They're supposed to rot as flat as they can be, and in the center. You might have marks out here and not down here and then that that's how you adjust your shims side to side so that the shims are adjusted on the preload on the carrier so you can go this way to make it tighter closer close is not always good because it may rod different it might rod up here further away is definitely not good it might rod just on the outer edges of the teeth you'll know that once you Put this together and if you don't do that correctly because this rear end will wind like crazy well, it just so happens that our shims are in their proper respected order and as shown we had a proper preload also right we had a decent preload for this many mile this much mileage and we're going to use the same ring gear so we're not changing anything about the carrier except for the spider gears which are right there on the ground and the pen and then uh that's it so you just want to be careful with this. And then we're going to clean that up with some good old fashioned gasoline. If we could get our hands on leaded gas and the environmentalists wouldn't have cut out that, I would have used that. So here's our unboxed Yukon, well, open box Yukon. Has our pin, our roll pin. Here's our pin to hold our spider gears in. These two go top bottom of the carrier. This is the side, 32 axle spline. We're gonna do some comparison by putting these on our axle spline axles in a ahead of time to make sure we don't have any problems. Because we don't want to use this if we have any machine problems here. We got a we got a lucky deal. We found this for 60 bucks. This is $180 retail. We found it brand new for 60. Thank goodness the libtards, excuse my language, over at Amazon 
do not have any idea what automobile parts are. We found it based on part number in their warehouse. They must have gotten an overstock shipment or someone didn't. I think they had a limited stock left. Too. Somebody did not want it and they had no idea what they had and what it was worth. So, whatever Doink runs that company, Amazon, and you can sign as a, in as a guest and order this for 60 bucks. So 180 retail everywhere and 60 bucks from Amazon's stupidity. So thank you, Amazon. Thank you. Finally, you gave something back to the community that isn't just pure Chinese junk. On accident, but yeah, nevertheless. Yes, I know you did it on accident. Look, here's your part number. Now you can order this from Yukon, you can order this from AutoZone, you can order this from O'Reilly's, you can order this from 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 CarQuest. You can order this from any one of your automo automobile parts. You see S32, man, 32 spline axle. That would be 35 if you had a 35. Yeah, spline. The, the number would change here at the end to 35 if it was 35, right? Yeah. Just that simple. Uh huh. So D60 for Dana 60, and if, yeah. Right, and if it was 30 spline, it changed to 30, right? Yeah. Okay. So I hope that helps people. Pretty simple part number. Right. Good. Okay, so we got to get some gasoline in here. Just enough to help clean this, these parts up. Don't worry, folks. Just gasoline gets recycled back into the environment properly. Oh, yes. Absolutely. We are total environmentalists here. We do not believe in wasting fuel. Nor do we believe... We totally believe in safety, too. Safety tips are extremely important. Yes. So when you pour gasoline, be safe. Make sure there are no open flames. Okay. Hey, is that a scuff mark? What's that? Check that out, huh? Looks like a mark. It does look like a scuff mark almost. Hmm. It's got a texture to it. Well, we'll have to see if there's a mark on there. Maybe they marked it for a purpose. Maybe they're like, hey, we'll set it right here. But this is not weighted in any particular way, so. Can I get the way real quick? What? I thought I saw something on this end right here. What'd you see? I thought I saw maybe a scuff mark on that side also. Really? Right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. It looked like a mark, like an alignment mark. Okay. And we'll check the barons out later. And uh, since we're putting this rear end together in the air, and we're going to run it a little bit, let it move manually. We're going to move it with our hands manually. That's a good thing because we're not putting any weight on it. To, to uh, Not even wheels, huh? No. To run it, we're not running it dry is what I mean. Gotcha. Right. So it's not necessary to just lubricate all these bearings and use a pre-lube and all that. That's for amateurs, okay? This is a junkyard slap together. I'm just kidding, this is actually gonna outlast your normal guy who follows all the proper procedures. The most important thing are your torque specs and, not, and don't be intimidated by things like this because they make rear end sound so intimidating. And transmissions. And especially automatic transmissions. I was intimidated by both. But look, looks like we're doing it. Yeah, all you gotta do is make sure your parts are clean before they go in. And y'all are doing it with me. So, y'all are not alone. First thing you wanna do is check your, your barons, your conical roller barons here. Okay? We're looking for pits. Yep. And your race. Okay? Since race is a big deal today, you wanna make sure your race is correct. Races are a very big deal. Yep. Especially on this application. You know how much money races make? Mm. The racist yeah. topic, you know how much money that makes, generates for politicians? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Especially when you're invested in uh invested in Dana Spicer or whoever else makes races too. Shut up. <laughs> Alright, look. <laughs> we got a little funny wear tiny mark right there, but it's not a pit. It's, it's just a wear. it it's not a wear, it's a look right here. It's a mark where a piece of spider gear ah, on our old spider gears have... The dimple? 
dimpled, but not not really. They had gotten there, gotten in the way, and then flew out of the way and put a tiny mark, but not enough to start eroding these barrens. See, I've already pre-tested these, sort of, so to speak, with oil on them. Okay, when they had their natural 80, 90 weight on them. Okay, so I'm, I'm I trust this barren. Okay, now uh, this other barren that houses the heavier ring gear side. And race, we will inspect those, right? So, race, give me that flashlight, that Chinese flashlight. It throws a nice LED glare. A pulse and LED glare at that. Yeah, so that I can't see it in the future. Um. You see those little? Yeah, I see the little dimple marks. They're not dimples. They're actually tiny, shiny marks where they wanted to get damaged further, but they couldn't. In other words, it, it, it didn't make it in time to damage these barons. Flung out before it could uh, Before it damage. could create severe pitting. But, what is that, lint? Okay, that's lint. That scared me there. Yeah, I see a tiny bit of sand there. You see, this barren is sketchy. Really? Yeah. How sketchy? Well, I don't like that right there. Is that pitting or is that sand? N no, it's right here. Look. Look at that. Ah, uh, yeah, see? I see. It's pitting. Okay. But you know what? Hmm. Say it. What are you thinking? Keep say, it? Say it. I'm going to use it again, because I've seen worse and I've used worse. We're not going for a full rebuild here. Uh, I'm not feeling any hang-up marks here, you understand? Yeah. It's still smooth. So whatever problem occurred here with damage, it corrected itself or smoothed itself back out over time. Driving. Now if this rear end gives me a vibration again, First suspect. Those barons, right? That's right. Not the spark exists because we'd be changing them out. Right. And if I do change these barons, I'm going after not just these carrier barons. The pinion? But I'm going after the pinion. And if I'm going after the pinion, then I'm going after the pinion and the ring gear. So oh. we'll order a set of barons for the pinion and these two carrier barons. Okay? Yeah. The problem is they're cheaper if you buy them separately in some occasions. Yeah, because I mean, they were worth 120, 140 from Yukon for two barons and races. Two barons. There's two barons and races. Races, 140, that's not a good price. That's horrible. Right, when I could buy these as wheel barons separately based on the part numbers for 20 bucks each. Do you understand? Yeah. So, that is definitely a way to get by cheaper. They, 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 they're not built any tougher. Than That's they what are. I was wondering. They're not. They're not. Okay. That's our new Baron? I mean, our new uh, yes. spider? Yeah, I stuck our new spider on our spline to make sure that it fit correctly on our spline before we even attempt to do this. All right. Well, let's get to it. All right. So we got our trusty tuberfer right here. Two by four support. I'm going to take our axle spider gears. Uh huh. Sorry if we don't know the technical terms of this. I do know the technical terms. Don't you undercut us ever. <laughs> How do you think our politicians got in office? They read a book and they became a politician. All right. Go in, go in, we put our two for the axle in first. Make sure your this one's a little bit tight. Okay, it was binding. Okay, so you put your two in for your axle first, like so. Then you take your two top and bottom smaller spider gear. All thrust washers were already on, yeah. 
Yeah, you make sure your thrust washers are on. If your thrust 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 washers have a problem staying together, you can always use a little oil on that. Now, here's the funny part. I got to go through the bottom here and set this one at the same basic rate, ba basic tooth spacing as the one on this side. See? So basically on the opposite side. Right. So I can rotate this whole assembly in one direction with the thrust washers. It looks like they have a little bit of oil on them so it kind of helps keep them in place. Well that's packaging so it don't rust. But see, if I make, do not put these in their right order, in their right, if I don't space them apart properly, what will happen is, you don't have to force it, what will happen is they will not line up when I'm already around again, see? Okay, here we go. Now, check out the side. Okay. Now, I think we're off a tooth. Otherwise, the pin wouldn't line up, right? The pin would line up if it was correct, right? Correct, but I don't think the pin lines up. Tell me why. Because one holes and the other one's straight. Why don't you take a look through? Through mine? Yeah, I see. That one, that gear's a little bit up. This one is lined up perfectly, but that one's up. This one's lined up perfectly? The one in the front here. I don't think so. Let's take a look. Let's put it this way. Look, we're off. Yeah. You see that? Oh, yeah. Never mind. I do see. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're off also on the bottom, so everything is shifted this way. So grab our old gears, pause that. Okay, so we stopped, we realigned, and we're gonna go have a second go at it here. Man, we counted our teeth. Ten tooth on that, sixteen on that. Okay, look. Gotta get my thrust washer lined up. Okay. It's amazing what'll happen if you're off by one tooth. So all we did was start in the center of the carrier here and then we started rotating the assembly this way and then we slid our other one in here and we rotated the whole assembly this way. Now, look at our holes. Are we lined up? Yeah, pretty dang straight. Pretty dang straight? Okay. Yeah. Well then it's dang straight. And then here goes our pin. This is our new pin? Yes. All right. And our roll pen, correct? Uh huh. Okay, so we don't have the notch here. It's on the other side. Our assembly goes this way. Now our pen knocked out from this way all the way out this way. So we go in the opposite? So we go in this way. Yeah. Okay. We go into about right here and we stop. Okay? Yeah. And we lock tight it in. Correct? Yeah. Watch your bolts, they might fall out. That's fine. They're all the same. You want to keep your hole lined up the best you can. And keep your hand on the bottom because your roll pin will fall out. I mean your pin will fall out. And this is where your pin goes in right here, right? Yeah. All right. So we need a little hammer and we need a punch. Yes. All right, so we put a little bit of Loctite on our roll pin, right? Roll pin in. Pretty self-explanatory. Now we have to hold our Well, see, when you're doing this by yourself, it's not that easy. I might as well just let these bolts fall out. There we go. Okay, our pin is there. Roll pin is here. Yeah, 
going in, huh? Trying to. I need to make sure this roll pin is straight. Let's get these bolts out of our way. We should have done that in the beginning. We'll clean those up with carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner. And we need to get this pin just in its right position. How's our hole on up here? Look. Can you see through that hole? Yeah. You see the light? Uh huh. Then we're on the right track. That's all you need to know. So we will take this and we'll. the problem is here. Let's see. It's just a matter of lining it up. And it's a new roll pin. Okay. Alright, I got it in between where it needs to be. There's a little give. See? Yeah. And that's where your pen, your roll pen, wants to stop. Once you get it in that area, now you can drive it down. Can you film that? seen these roll pins fly out on these and the whole spider assembly just come kind of flying out no they back themselves out to about right there there now we're talking good okay that's sitting flush has its Loctite see so this is not a solid hole folks this hole right here is it's a solid hole it's a solid hole through but it's a beveled hole so it's it's bigger on this end to about right here it stays large it stays about a little bit bigger than a quarter inch then it goes down to about three sixteenths and it stays three sixteenths all the way to about right here that's so it don't fall out the other way no, that's that's the point of tightness. That's that's where the roll pin starts to take up the slack. Oh, gotcha. So what I'm saying is, this is a bigger hole. So the illusion that you could just take a quarter inch piece of extension or driver or anything and just shove it through this hole and keep going, you can't, because it tapers gotcha. down to a smaller size, which is about three sixteenths roughly. Gotcha. Get it? Mm -hmm. So that would throw a lot of people off trying to get these gears loose. That's pretty good for a tight gear set with no grease, no oil, no nothing. The ones without chips in it too. You mean like this? These guys were shimmying and shaking all over the highway and making a lot, a lot of noise. Look. Yep. So for the last ten years. Well, let's get this out of here. Put this over there. We'll make some kind of statue out of it or something. Yeah, you can uh... weld the machine. Okay, we're drying the gear oil with brake cleaner off of our assembly so that things like Loctite and, that and stuff uh, stick. And any other metallic parts that were on this assembly are gone from the chipped gears, it's chipped spider gears, so dead free. All right, now, clean, clean. What's next? Is there any particular way that this ring gear goes on? I don't know, do we have a mark? Because it looks like on this gear we have a notch right there. Oh, we do, we have a notch. This is the read of speed sensor. Oh, okay. Okay, for the rear end. 
Up at the top, huh? If you want to know what those little teeth are for, yeah. We don't really have any marks except for a scrape mark right there that was probably from the factory at some other point. Well, we could just say, hey, some of these may be offset just a little. I can't remember. It's been a long time. And it might only let you put it on one way, but we'll find out right now, won't we? Sure will. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put my little scratch mark just for giggles this way. We need to get our ring to line up. I'll tell you what, I'll do it this way then, the hard way. Ring gear. How's that look? Not lined up yet. No. Okay, well, how that's about, starting right how about there. Right there. That's starting to line up now. Should we start putting some bolts in? No. Or to hold it up at least, or no? <coughs> oh, just clips in. Light. Gotcha. There you go. How does that look? Thread, 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 thread. Yeah, they're all threaded. Good. Uh huh. Okay, the problem is we didn't wash off the outside. So, let's start again. Loctite can't do it to be fully effective unless it has all grease and solvents removed, right? Yeah. Yeah, hey, watch that brake cleaner. It's a little bit on the, uh, how would you call it? It stays behind too much. Not like brake clean. What do you mean? For some reason, that brand of brake cleaner likes to stay behind. You mean it pulls moisture? Yeah. Most, it doesn't really evaporate most, as much as other ones do. Most solvents pull moisture and let they have certain detergents in them. Let's see. Looks like that was old factory Loctite there. You turn out the light? Yeah, I did. Turn it back on, buddy. Yeah. So what we got is a bolt here and a bolt here. And our, our ring gear is just kind of hanging here. Where we can push it up into place, see? Because we got a lot of bolts to tighten. And what I'll do is go ahead and tighten these a little bit more so it keeps the ring gear up and even. Ain't unclean bolts like gasoline. Yeah, I just went ahead and threw those bolts in gasoline because that carburetor cleaner it's just used a little it's just a lot of it's just a waste of money, honestly. It really is for something this dirty. Yeah. Alright. So these bolts are fairly tight, hand tight. So we got these two, not to be mistaken for anything else. So we got 11, I think, total. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 11. We still got one missing. I'm confused. Maybe I overcounted or undercounted. That always happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, 12. What's the really? Problem? So, oh, anyway, let's start into you. Well, there we go. Look at that, guys. See the mistakes you can make? But we didn't actually make a mistake yet. You can throw that in gas real quick. I'll switch it around. All right, fine. All right. All right. Now, what do we need to do next? We need to tighten this. Any particular sequence? No. Don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they're getting picky on that. Actually, this is the worst case scenario. If these come out, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right. No, seriously. You are screwed. I imagine if anything came out in this system, you'd be screwed, right? Well, I don't know. You saw the teeth kind of strip off those gears. Yeah. 
you get a death wobble at like 72, 75. And pretty much been through the whole drivetrain minus the rear end. Watch out, I'm leaking a little bit. Yeah. You have some left for those cap bolts? If I don't, I'll go get some out of the cabinet, buddy. Yep. Alright, let's see. Believe it or not, this is what they do at transmission repair shops when they're supposed to be changing out those bolts and they don't. Oh yeah, those remember are. That? It's mm -hmm. on our videos. Sure is. I remember that. That you mean that video that we're working on right now, huh? Uh, this ain't the right so, uh, socket, pal. Bigger than that. Clip that. All right. Number one, thirteen, sixteen. Every other one. I would really hate to estimate with this machine. Give me a torque wrench. That's about 60. Give me the old fashioned torque wrench with the analog gauge. That goes up to 100. Yeah, I know. Grab that. Never mind, you got a video camera to hold. All I could get was 60, 70 by holding it by hand. Yeah, let me hold it for you then. We'll cover real quick. Okay, it needs to be tighter. Gotcha. I got up to 80 and it quit. All right. So. So get the old-fashioned ratchet out. Nope. Set this to mode number two. I trust okay. Chinese Milwaukee. I don't know. <laughs> Like, jeez, I'm glad you're overkilling it. Man. Not really. That's only about 100, 110. It's about 110? Uh, yeah, about. I think it's about 110. Based on bench I testing. I the socket a few times because I think this is actually a metric size. All right. This was a 13 16 right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I used that's on it. That's what we've been using. A 6 yeah. point? Uh, uh, 12 point. 12 point, well then 13 16 is good enough. Um, Should I get the old trusty ratchet out? No. I, I think I'm confident with this. I mean, All right, this yeah. is pretty damn tight. Yeah, no, mode number two, pretty tight with that thing. I put my lug nuts on with mode number two. Yeah. And they require 140 foot pounds. Oh yeah, more than that, then yeah, I would go with that. That's yeah, I mean, what else are you gonna do? And I went all the way around and make sure that the socket didn't rotate anymore. Right? You were watching it. I was watching it. Yeah. Uh, guys on the camera were watching it. All right. So I think we're done with this. What do you think? I think we're so pretty no good. playing around with this. Yeah. All right. Next step, we put that damn thing in. True, true. But first, you got to get our <laughs> witch call ready, though, right? What, our caps or our, our caps. rear end cover? Just our caps. Yeah, caps. Yeah, well, I have our caps marked. So we don't actually need to do that. What we need to do is put the truck in neutral. Gotcha. Because the drive shaft is still hooked up. Oh yeah, it's, the pinion's got to spin and clap right, in. Right, so we got to spin it and push it into place. And we can actually leave the caps off until we get ready. But we can show how we need to rotate this into place. All right, yeah. Which is not much. We just kind of stick it in there and let it kind of rotate itself. Right. But once we reach the preload section, look, and the barons are doing this right here. They're kind of teetering inward. Yeah. So that they can be preloaded that way. Then we kind of, you're supposed to use like a rubber hammer or something stupid or whatever, but I'm going to use a good old fashioned boot to the head and we're just going to kick it in. Right? All right. Hey man, this is about shade tree. We don't have no special tools either. Right. Except for this Chinese Milwaukee impact, ship builders impact. Anybody could buy that at any store pretty much. Any yeah, home. for 300 bucks. Minus a battery. Yeah. All right, pause that. I got something else to do. Okay. Spin that pink. <laughs> You don't have to spin it yet, let it spin itself. So we have these shims in here as they were. You can tell this shim's a little thinner than that one, right? This one might actually be two shims. That's the way factory had it set up. 
and we were doing fine before. Okay. We got the same carrier and everything. So. Right. So. All right. Well, let's get started. Let's see. Okay. So we'll see. And that glare of the light there. Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses. At least these videos aren't as dry as cake. Let's I've see. seen Black Sabbath. <laughs> Let's see. Can I have glary to light, please? Yes. Here's glary. Up here at the top. Okay, right here. All right, so you can see what we're trying to do here. Yeah, those barons are doing a little cock out, like you said. Yep. It's always fun to do this with a van that's sitting on jack stands, knowing that you have at least 8,000 pounds that's going to smash you to death. And you have a few backup jack stands right there, which are not capable of holding up anything. Three ton, then you have six ton jack stands. Are these six or 12? Those are six. Great. But uh, they're all from Harbor Freight. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm all fuzzy inside all over that. Let me see, uh, let me see that turbifer. Yeah, yeah. There you go. set up to where I don't chip any teeth. All right, about right there. So let's use a rubber hammer, right? How about a two by four? How about a cheap piece of shitty pine, right? Uh-huh, soft anyway. That's a good preload, dude. It is. It's actually taking a little bit of force to put in. I guess when you go with all the same barons and all the same shims and the same carrier and everything, you really don't have to rebuild the whole damn thing. Oh, well, you got a spike gear problem. Why do you think they sell the parts separately? So you don't break the bank trying to rebuild your, sh your own stuff. Uh, I knew you were going to say the word shit. Let's see. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Let's take yellow pine out of there. All right. Pawn chips are always healthy for the ring gear. All right, now what's next? That in all the way? It's, it's in far enough to let the caps pull it in the rest of the way, is it not? It sure is. I guess, yeah, I mean, it would pull it in. I was going to wash out these caps, but I changed my mind. So it takes too long. Let's see. Give me glary. I just don't want any shit right here on the ends of the caps that are going to interfere with anything. Okay. You got that? Yeah. Good? Mm-hmm. Here are two bolts. Right here. Right? Yep. Passenger side, or right, as we put it. Yeah, because I'm dyslexic like that, yo. Let's see. Now, you don't want to cross thread these. These are not fine thread bolts. At one point, I had marked these bolts, but I've decided that these bolts are not necessary to mark. The caps are the only important part of this. 
okay. I, I can't exactly do this with that with this cap this way. Should yeah. Give me glaring. Yeah. So. Okay. What one lining up? No, I'm sideways a bit. See. Ah. <laughs> well, since we have a good preload, a pineapple's pretty much keeping itself in. Yeah, of course it's, it's in there. Pretty strong. Yeah. Alright, so these are the ones that get 90, right? Right, okay. So I'm still loose. Yeah, these get 90. That's great. Right there. I always get a little bit of play, right? Oh, yeah. Otherwise, how would it run? Fine. <laughs> yeah. Mode number one of that is 60 to 70. It's a good starting point. Uh, 55 is where it started turning on me. So they say I need 90. Okay. <sighs> 90. You know what? Let's try this thing again. Let's see what our ring gear is really at, right? Yeah. Close to at, because you remember I let it peg a few times. Right. Oh yeah, so let's see what uh, the denominator is. How the denominator is with number two. Correct. I guess we got any naysayers on a video that say, hey man, you can't trust an impact. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. So, maybe they weren't. But I let them sit there and spend for a minute. 90. 95. 90. Left-handed. 100. What do you think? 90, 90, as long as we're good all around, we're good. Well, we're about at 100. 90, between 95 and 100. 90, 90, 95 and 100. Will that put extra drag on the bearings or no? I don't think Dude, so. Dude, no, it's no. not going to crush those no races. No freaking way. Now, look what we can do now. Now, here you go. Here's your 13 uh, sixteenths. <laughs> How about if we see what we really got? Let's see. I mean, all I can tell is up to 100 because... This cheesy torque wrench only goes up to 100. Uh -oh. hey, It'll know. stop right there. Alright. Ooh, it ain't moving, is it? I reached 100, it didn't move. Alright, so we're. Good. I'm confident. Yeah. Confident enough. Alright. What do you think? Changed spider. Yep. Should I let it alone or leave it where it is? Mm, I'd say leave it. We're at a hundred. Doesn't seem like it's gonna turn. Like it's gonna, like it's gonna turn, huh? Otherwise, I'll give you. Look, a watch my torque wrench. That's good. All right. Otherwise, I'll give you a little faithful here, and you can try her out. No, we're good. Oh, my other torque wrench? No, you're right. Ratchet. That has no torque setting. No, it doesn't. I heard right. the torque ratchet broke. <sighs> yeah. Because it was from AutoZone. <laughs> okay, so we didn't put the rear end cover on yet. We're going to put the axles in first to make sure we don't have any hang ups or problems, okay? So that's our next step. So our next step is to permatex both sides of this. You don't have to. And I never knew the true torque specs to this anyway, so I can't tell you what they are. And these bearings were previously done, and they were just checked um, on other prior videos on my channel. So, we're confident that these bearings are good because they were replaced, and it wasn't that long ago. So, 
I'm going to permatex this because like I said, I don't like rear end fluid inside my center cap. Some people may not care and they may just use this, this steel gasket. But once you use it so much, it starts to spin oil out, no matter what you do. Yeah, if you got nice looking rims and tires, I don't think you would want rear end grease on your... Well, it also interferes either. with the ABS. When you get grease or a seal leak behind here or anywhere around here and it makes it onto the rotor, it interferes with your ABS when you stop. That's why you get a funny stop. And uh, I learned that very early on. So, I'll go ahead and put my little makeshift gasket or a gasket that comes with the vehicle. I never did know what the actual torque specs were for this, so like I said, I just knew it's a 14 millimeter socket. And I know the tricks to be able to use a five inch center cap on a full floating rear end. So that I could have a center cap of my choice on here that wasn't big, long and stupid looking. And that took a bit of a sacrifice that I learned to live with for the past 10 years. And that secret is, is grind your bolts down. Take them out, grind them down to a certain point, but make sure you never ever strip them out because then that'll cause a major problem. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And no Loctite is necessary on this because you want to be able to remove your axles frequently when necessary. Some Loctite. Let me show you what you do with Loctite, right? So here's your bolts. These are my bolts. Your bolts will look different. Your bolts will have a big long head, that long. I took mine off and ground them down without overheating them. That's the important part. You don't want to take the temper out of the bolt. So don't overheat them, grind them down. And then you can put a rim with a five inch or five and a half inch center cap. So you don't have to put an eight inch center cap sticking way out here or a seven inch center cap. It's almost hard, extremely hard to find. So this allows me to use a conventional center cap. Does that make sense? Sure does. Okay, well it works for me. And then all these are ground down and about weighted about what and what. Okay? So they're not going to throw anything out of balance. And they're not going to weaken anything on the axle. Is that your thread locker? <laughs> well, let's just say it's one. Let me see. So you got to pry up, get yourself started, rotate until you get in, there you go, you're in. Okay, between 60 and 80 was our torque specs on these bolts. Like I said, they're shorter than yours. So, I just tighten them down with the old Milwaukee on number one and let them click a few times. So let's see what we really have. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, hell, that's tight enough. <laughs> anyway, between, yeah, 50 wasn't moving. between 60 and 80, is your torque specs for these bolts, but whatever. Just tighten them up, okay, dudes? Yeah. I don't think you need a torque wrench. Just make sure that they're even all the way around and you don't strip off their heads. And making sure they're even is go bam, 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 bam. And cross, then hit, cross pattern. Cross pattern real quick and then just run around in a circle. See? Oh, well, you can clip that. You get the... Okay. The other side axle is the same thing, right? The side is just like Hanes. <laughs> Installation is reversal, removal of reversal, etc., etc. Nike Reebok, outdated clothing, outdated manuals. In this case, and the other side is the same as other side. That's right. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so we're going to do a B to RTV on the rear cover. Of course, I don't know why I need to show you this, but maybe some people aren't confident that you can do this without a gasket and just use gasket maker. But this is RTV Black. And RTV Black, as I've said before, holds up to the most oil transmission fluid gasolines mm. petroleums what you would use on an oil pan etc you wouldn't go through blue on here necessarily even though it would probably work honestly blue well, that's what you use for water pumps and shit but it would work probably gray honestly gray would work because I've used gray on the rear, on the axle housings. Gray yeah. worked fine. Gray is partly oil resistant, just enough. Gray was used on here then. Look, I just scraped gray off. Yeah, there's a bit of it right now, there. whether that was Ford or that was somebody before I bought this vehicle. I don't know. But I know it had to be more than 10 years. Let's see. Because I've had this vehicle for 11. And I know I never pulled this rear end cover off. Yeah, no. Pulled the axles out many times. Change the rear end oil, even. Yep. Remove the plug and change the rear end fluid. Rear end 8090 gear oil. By the way, 8090 goes in here in case you didn't know. And. Fairly standard oil, I think. What? Fairly standard oil, right? They actually got a company called Standard Oil. <laughs> Is that what you were referring to? No. I mean, like, that's kind of normal. Because, see, because that would confuse people. See, because they come in the comment and say, here. Give me glare of the light. Shh. I didn't mean that. Damn it. Okay. You want to try to get it in one shot so you don't smear your gasket maker all over the place and come out with some holidays, okay? That's what I was focusing on doing. We had to scrape that off to read it. Yeah, apparently I painted over it. Yeah, thanks. So in one of my videos, if I ever say, there's no way to tell what's on a Ford rear end, as the F-150 enthusiasts say, there's no way to tell what's on an Econolon rear end. Or in people who have looked for it, it's like, I can't find it, I can't, can't find, find it. can't find it, it's on this tag right here. Scrape that tag off, buddy. Unless yeah. somebody left it off purpose. That's not the best way to do this. That bolt's tight, right? Yeah, you just tighten that one. Alright. So now we just gotta get our oil in here. Yep, alright, cut. <coughs> I'm gonna get this top picture on there. Oh, whatever. Oh, it's time to put our 8090 in there. Let's see if we can get it in there. How many quarts does this thing hold? Uh, I think it is six point something pints, which is, since two pints are in a quart, three and some change. Watch out. It's trying. Trying, huh? <laughs> it's just thick, isn't it? Yep. Hey, look, I just kind of made it go down. Cool. Let me see if I can prime it this way. Shut it. There we go. Look at that. I could do this for a couple of hours and make people sit on a video and watch. Or we can come back when we're done. We probably should come back. All After right. we're done filling up the Master P. Percy Miller? Percy Miller oil? Yeah. Master Pro oil? Percy Miller oil? Yeah. Oh, don't make fun of Master P, the rapper. His career is over. Alright.
Alright, so our rear end took almost a gallon. Okay, we're about like a half a quart shy of a gallon. That was from not counting what was in the axle tubes, which they probably drained out over time. So, empty this rear end takes almost a gallon. Probably half a quart shy. And uh, in order to squeeze the rest out of that gallon, we had to kind of smash the jug and get the straw lower to the bottom of the gallon. The, I mean, the, the one gallon container to get the rest out. So, all we have left in there is probably half a quart, maybe even a quarter of a quart. And we got it up to the halfway line on, on the... Uh, Start spilling out. On the spill out line. So, a little bit below halfway. And, uh... Okay, so now we're ready to test it. So we're going to throw four stock lugs on each side to tighten the rotors up so that we can freewheel it and drive and uh, see if we have any vibration. Yeah. Okay.